हेलो हेलो कृति सर या या चैताली या कैन यू गिव मी लाइक फाइव मिनट्स टू एक्सप्लेन दी डिस्काउंट्स एंड ऑफरिंग्स या सो गाइज इफ यू आर बैक फ्रॉम दी लंच ब्रेक प्लीज रेज योर हैंड्स और पुट यस इन द चैट बॉक्स सो आई कैन गो अहेड यस प्लीज पुट योर हैंड रेज और पुट यस इन द चैट बॉक्स ओके ओके थैंक यू just a minute let me share my screen i hope you can see my screen Okay, so we have festive offers for you all on Microsoft certification training courses. As you can see on the screen, at fifty percent discount, which includes forty hours of instructor training, MOC that is Microsoft Official Curriculum, re-attempt of exam uh, if you failed at first attempt, then the Azure Pass, sample papers and assessment. for inquiry related to it you can connect us at chaitali@synergetics-india.com or you can whatsapp us on the given number then we have offer particularly for pl 300 this is the advanced paid training which is as which is at 50% discount that is for 11500 plus gst this discount is valid till 7th of october then the batch will start from 18th october which is for 3 days the training will includes all of the uh, all of the details like the moc as job pass then the instructor lead for more inquiry you can connect us at chaitali@synergetics-india.com or whatsapp us on the given number again i will drop the details related to it in the chat box so you can connect us through that thank you oh uh, kiti sir you can go ahead with the session thank yeah. you okay sir thank you let me know if you can see this thing Yeah, yeah, the screen is visible. Okay. Okay, right. Uh, so, I hope you had a good lunch, and uh, now we are uh, going to explain like a uh, kind of uh, hands-on, and I will make you familiar with how these three different components work all together. So, first, uh, as a prerequisite, I during this uh, theoretical concept, I was mentioning about Power BI Desktop, then Power BI Service, and then uh, using this, you can create the reports and publish the reports. So, first, you have to think about if you don't have the Power BI Desktop, then you can just uh, search from Microsoft website, or you can just use this store, and uh, you can download. the power bi desktop version which is available free of cost to use uh, for us so i have already installed that in my system but <clears throat> you can also figure out something from there like power bi desktop and from here you can also download that so here you have power bi But uh, if you have this store available, then you can also search from here. Power BI Desktop. That's it. 
and you can just if you have not downloaded it will be uh, with the download option and once you download install it right so that's the first step you have to use this power bi desktop uh, using that you will be uh, creating reports using some visualize and everything so for me it is already there so i have this uh, downloaded and installed in my system so for as a first time we are opening uh, then you have to sign in so it will ask you to sign in with your uh, account so i am logged in with this account and then you will be able to see uh, the interface from where you can just speak everything so let's discuss few things about uh, this tool first so i was talking about the visualizations uh, during this uh, theoretical section so here you can see when you open this you will be able to see this column called uh, visualization i'm talking about this section visualization so from where you will be able to see what type of visualizations or visual controls you want to use in your report so here you can see uh, we have the option called uh, build visuals there we have the number of options like stack bar chart column charts clustered bar so these all are the visuals which can be utilized in any of the report development and what type of data you want to render and how you want the data can be presented to the end user based on that you have to identify which visual effect, visual control will be best suitable for that right so any control can be used from uh, this visuals and in the same same box we have this three dots this one so this is basically used to uh, get more visuals say for example if you are not finding any visuals which is fitting with your requirements so you can just click on this and here we have three more options like get more visuals so once you click on that it will open that uh, this pop up and from here we can use pre visuals or someone uh, who have uploaded into this app source the visual power bi visual app source you can find that right so here you can see this image uh, pro and linear bars and timeline slicer so these are the uh, different visuals which is not available out of the box but someone like me or you have developed and uploaded those component on uh, this uh, power bi visual app source I think someone is unmuted. Uh, can you please mute? OK, so uh, that's the like uh, a free or paid uh, controls you can use as a visuals uh, in your in your reports if you are looking out for. But it is possible that uh, let's say, for example, this HTML content. So here you will be able to render this uh, uh, data from the data set in terms of uh, uh, html so you can use this content this control html file content so based on that requirement you can use whatever the component you are looking for Just be open this. Okay, so that's the option that from here there you can access import a visual from a file. So once you download that file, let me open that and I'll show you. Get more visuals. Then it will open that pop up dialog from where you can access that. So I am just trying to select this HTML file. And it will allow you to somehow it is not coming up. So
so you can like once you download that file after that you can import a visual from that file and that control will be available in this gallery that visual build visual gallery from there you can just click on that and add into your report right so that's the first thing and then uh, in the same visualization window we have this uh, other brush icon that is for the formatting so uh, if you format something for this page this is for the page information you can see the page number so you can just change that properties like this and allow use as a tooltip allow question answer so you can change accordingly and then uh, canvas setting so this is canvas setting where you can see the white color so this type is 16 or 9 you can use as many uh, options available uh, any options available from this type and you can also set the alignment top or middle so these are the properties for page and if you are using any control then on that control that property will be available when you are selecting that control so this is for the visualization right now let's move to this uh, menu bar so here you can see in the menu we have different options under this home tab uh, we have get data this options so this is related to the data so when we are talking about data we have this much of options available from where you can get the data right so if i click on uh, let's do one thing first let's enter manual data i do not want to go with any excel or any other online services but i want to add the data uh, from my end like runtime enter, entering the data so i'm just clicking on the enter data and it will allow me to create table right same way like we have the interface in the excel so i'm just creating this in uh, changing the column name like uh, uh, id and name for example and just giving the data one and then ap2 like this and once i click on you can just also give the name of the table here assume that this is your excel sheet and you are entering the data in different column and you are creating the table for that and then click on load so that data will be available for me here you can see it is loading the data so whenever we are connecting with any data source it will try to load all the data which is available in that uh, source so for now we have three rows in this table which we just created so it is loading very fast with all the columns and all the data right so this is simple table we have created now for this table if you want some if you want to change something then we have this uh, menu when we are clicking on this uh, three dots here and we'll be able to oh, we'll be open be able to open this menu from there you can just rename it delete it or manage aggregation incremental refresh edit query anything you can do that right so let's do that uh, rename first rename the table like first table for example and enter and i want to write a query so i was talking about this edit query tool so this is power bi query uh, editor so for this table i want to write a query so just click on that edit query and it will open your query editor for you right so in query editor this is our table name in the left navigation you can see this this is the table name and this is these are the data which already have in the table we just added and this is the query I'm just opening that. This is the query. So it says that table dot transform column types source source equal to ID, which is type is having integer, and other column name is name, which type is text. Right. So this is the data uh, I have for this one. So you can write the query or update any query from this query editor uh, tool. And if you are okay with that. Then you can just click on this menu top right top left corner 
apply, close, or close and apply. So all the changes you have made for your query, it will be reflected. And based on that, you will be able to see the data. Right? Same way. Let me go back. I'm just closing this. I'm just clicking on close. So I will be in main uh, uh, Power BI desktop page. And like whatever the column you want to select in your report, as of now for this table, we have two columns. So the columns you want in your report, you just have to select those, right? So now in this section canvas area, you can see it is by default like coming with this, right? So this is coming out of the box, but if you want some other visualization, let's say for example, I want to use this pie chart. So you can just click on that pie chart. And uh, you can just use drag and drop where you want to place it. So I want to place it here and here you can see in the filters. We have this control selected or if I select this uh, chart, then you can see in the filters I have the different uh, fields selection. ID and name two columns, right? So same way you have to select some columns for this chart which can allow you to render the data. So for, for that, select this uh, visuals. And from here, you can see legends, visual uh, values and details. Those are the fields which you want to display or render the data in this chart. So you can just select name. So you can see it comes under the legend here. I have just selected that name. And you can see in the legend column, I have that name all over. All right now, what I want that as a name, I do not want uh, 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 ID. I do not want name as a legend, so I'm just selecting ID and just moving this ID into the legend column. And name would be my value. So like this. And you can just drag and drop, drag and uh, drop wherever you want to stop and it will be automatically changed height and width accordingly. So this is one sample how you can use this uh, enter data manually and get your report done or use any visual controls uh, for that one. And here you can see we have this filter available. So you can use the filters. Right, so here we can change to that uh, filters on this page. A to Z or Z to A. Ascending order, descending order. So you can use that, right? And if you want that, okay, I do not want to check this, but I want to see how the data will look like in a table for me. So right click on it and so as table. So it will look like this. Okay, count of table, count of name, one from one. And then you can just check or go back. So this is one type of visual uh, we can use for data. And again, all visual selections will be depend on what type of data you want to represent and how your end user will be interpreting that data and will be able to see, okay, this is what we are looking out for. And this is the data that can help us to identify some uh, or, or or make us uh, or help us to uh, take some decisions and uh, forecasting for upcoming months or years for that that specific component. So that we can use uh, from here. Now uh, that is uh, for uh, this control. Now see the property of this control. I have selected this control, a uh, visual here, and now here you can see uh, we have this browse icon where we can set the property of these visuals uh, with different options. So you can see here legends. So legend is already turned on, but if you do not want to display in this uh, 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 report, in this visual, you can just click turn off. So it will be removed from the visual uh, from the legend section, right? And if you want, then just click turn and turn off. And then you have the slice. So slices means 
different slice on this chart. So you will, if you want to change the color, you can change it. Like you can have the different set of colors. So you can change it from here. Then if do not, you do not want to go with the change, you just have made, just click on the reset to default. So the default will be there. And then we have the details label. So you can see the details label is turned on for now. And uh, I have option called outside. So if we click inside, then all the labels like this one, one, one will be available or change their position instead of outside it will display inside that for outside and inside that so it depends like how you want to represent the data and then this label contains so label contains this data value and percentage of total so here you can see the number and percentage but if you want that percent of total then you can just select that and data value only number then category and data value. So three, one. And category and percentage. And we'll go with the, this one, right? So how you want to represent the data that will be also available for that specific control. And this is the value like what what would be the formatting for the value? So you can see here in the uh, font size. Color, everything is mentioned here. So you can also change the property like instead of nine, I want to display 20 as a font size. So here you can see the font size is increasing for these numbers, values. Right? And you can also make it bold. You can change the color. Yes. So whatever depends, uh, the color selection is as per your requirement. Then we don't have that background option for this label, so it is disabled. And display unit, so you can change uh, like this one. This option like this one, zero K kind of, so you can change that. So I will go with the auto, so it will take the auto number. In. And then again, uh, rotation, like how you want to rotate this, like. The, this, all the slides are rotating like this. That is there. So each and every visual will have different set of properties. It is not necessary that all the visuals will have the same set of properties, but it depends like what control you are using to represent the data. Right? So this is about vision and this is the general properties. So in general properties, we have the properties called if you want to change the height and width, so here, if I'm just dragging and dropping, the height and width will be changed in these boxes. You can visualize this here in the size. Now I'm just uh, increasing the height and width. So accordingly, it will be changed. So sometimes what happened, like you have uh, eight or 10 components in the same report and you have to accommodate all of them. So you can just adjust height and width by using this or you can just use drag and drop with mouse, but sometimes we want that pixel perfect uh, 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 layout design. So you can use this uh, option from here. And then we have the side position. So position is horizontal 33, 27 and vertical. Now if I drag and drop to my right side, then it will be changed. Here 696 and 103. So it will consider your X and Y from here. So it is zero, zero now. And I want to place this just beside this. Okay. So you can just use this uh, position uh, property for that control. And then we have the advanced option. So uh, uh, maintain layer order. So if you want that, uh, uh, the we have that property in PowerPoint or anywhere where we can just want to send back or send forward. So you can use this uh, layer maintenance order for that. Then we have the title. So here you can see the title is count of name by uh, ID, this one. And this is also available in this property. But what if you want to change uh, as per your understanding or your requirement, like it should uh, display the proper data for user, right? So. Um, 
cycle count let's say for example and we have that option and you can change this uh, heading option from here accordingly it will change that here in this box font space and font size so you can just increase these to 24 so this will look like this and you can also make it bold you can change the color as well and then background color for this we can have the background color as of now we have white color so you can just use this uh, as a background for this title and alignment of these text display left right or center whatever you want and text trap is already turned on if you have more characters in this uh, title so it will be automatically wrapped uh, in a new line so that is for title and effect so if you want some background effect then you can just check this so this is for your area where uh, you are displaying this control so let's do this for this color kind of and then you can use transparency as well like match with your legacy theme if you are using any you can change it from here and then visual borders so we don't have any borders as of now but as and when i turned on i will have the view borders available for this box you can see if i just move mouse outside of this control you can see the back uh, black color border and also you can change that color to so instead of black if you want this blue color you can use this now you can see uh, we have the blue color border same way you can change this uh, white uh, color uh, for this border and if you want to use shadow so you can also use that so these are some of the properties which can be uh, uh, added for or updated for any visual controls uh, you are looking for but it all depends on your requirement like how you want to uh, render the data how you want to uh, have a kind of legacy theme if you are using any uh, any portal which have the predefined theme uh, with the font color font face font size so you can also accommodate that uh, in this uh, uh, visual controls right so these two see me uh, this build visual properties as well as this property for that specific control it will be similar but uh, the change will be only for the visuals which you are going to use but rest of the properties like this uh, visual and general general properties will mostly remain same uh, for all the controls so that's the reason that i picked that one before we go ahead with other get data models and other options right so this is all about this controls. Uh, sorry, uh, this control properties. Now I'm just going to use another uh, method for getting the data. So I'm explaining you this uh, in a detail like get data. So in previously uh, theoretical concept, we were looking of uh, looking out for uh, an option that there are more options available when we are talking about from where to get the data, right? So here you can see we have this uh, set of data like uh, if you want to pull the data from Excel, then Power BI data set, data flows, data SQL server, or flat file, or any uh, any other like which is not available here, you can just click on more. And from there, uh, you will be able to see more options, right? So let's click on more and we'll see what it comes with. So it will allow you to uh, like select other options so you get data so in the left side you can see we have main categories like all file database kind of now if you are okay or if you know that okay i have to collect or select data from here then you can just type excel see so excel is a type of file and you can see the template so here excel is your uh, uh, type which is for file and this is the template excel workbook so you can use this data set uh, sorry uh, 
type of uh, template to get the data. And if you are not OK, just click on cancel and uh, type like, for example, SharePoint. So if your data is available in SharePoint site, then you can just search with SharePoint and you have three options like from where you want to pick the data, either from folder or list, online list or any SharePoint list. So you can use any of these options available where your data is available. Then uh, if we don't want to go with this, then we can also check with the database, for example, SQL Server. Right, so that is coming under the database, and this is for SQL Server database or uh, SQL, Servers, uh, SQL Server Analysis Services database. So you have to pick uh, the database or data source accordingly. So let's do this for one of the Excel sheet, or let's do this for SharePoint. For example, because I have already created something for SharePoint. So I'm just using this in SharePoint list. I'm selecting this as a source. Now, when you're trying to connect this, it may ask you for authenticate uh, with whatever the data source you are uh, connecting. So I'm trying to connect this SharePoint. So it will ask you for connecting to the SharePoint site. So here I have to pass the SharePoint site URL. So here, uh, I have already opened my SharePoint site. I'm just opening one of the list. Uh, for example, I'm just collecting this. I don't have much record here. I can select this. This list and I just have to pass this site URL. So I'm just selecting my site name and just passing this URL and clicking on OK. So if you are not logged in into this site or uh, not authenticated, then it will ask you to enter your username and password, right? So I am using my Microsoft account and it says credentials provided are invalid. So uh, my password has been changed recently. So that is why I have to re-authenticate. So I'm just trying to connect sign in as a different user and I have to pass my username and password. So I'm just connecting with that. And I'm just trying to log in. So it says sign in is complete. You can return to application and you can close this window. Right. So you are currently signed in in the same window and I'm clicking on connect. Now I will be able to see uh, the data for this site. So I'm connected with this. Right, it's still loading. Now I will be able to see all the list. See here, the set of list. Right, all the lists are available here only in this site. In SharePoint site, if I go to write content, then I will have all these uh, options available for me. These are the list. The same view, uh, we can see that 100 plus items, items one. So that same view is available here. Now you have to pick which uh, list you want to use as a data source, right? So I'm just trying to use this uh, this list because I have more data on that. And it will try to give you uh, this uh, preview for whatever the data you are trying to do, right? Now from here, you have to make a decision like, See, in this table, I have lots of columns, right? But it may happen that you are more interested in some of the columns, but not all, all the columns. So I'm just trying to use email address and ID or name title. So I'm just clicking on the transform data. Otherwise, you can also use that load data and uh, then you will be able to see uh, all the data, right? But while we are transfer, uh, transferring the data, I will remove the unnecessary column. So for example, this column, I do not require this column for reports. So I'm just selecting it and um, have that remove option, remove that. So meanwhile, you can uh, select more than one column just using shift and click. 
and remove columns. I do not require this compliance assets as well. And this ID I do not require. Modified is not required. These are the columns. This is not necessary for this. So I'm just selecting all together. Just click on remove columns from here as well. So we have this data with us. And I'm OK, like I'm OK with this data. So once you're done, just click on this close and apply. So your data set will be available here in the left side where we have the field option. Here, this table will be created for us. See here we have that option. This list. And it is coming with three columns only, which we have just selected. Right, so this is the way that you can exclude unnecessary columns when you are uh, connecting with your data and uh, transforming the data. So now I need this much of columns only, and I'm just removing this controls. And I want to use a kind of uh, this chart control where I want to display. See here now I have to add the columns like and x axis and y axis. What I want to display. So in the x, I want to display ID and in the Y I want to display title or email address and uh, agent as a title. Or you can use multiple columns uh, in that, but it's better to use separate things in small X and Y like this. Right. So again, it depends how you want to represent your data. So I think that is not a good example of representing the data for this one, but I can use my chart and just get this name and title will be everything. So this way you can use different set of controls by transforming your data. So that's one thing and I'm deleting this. So that's one example that you can access uh, any uh, data source from online. Now, what if you have this Excel sheet available with you uh, in your data set uh, in your system? So you can just click on Excel. And then uh, you can uh, pull out that specific uh, library or uh, sorry file from your system. And if you have uh, other report file, for example, uh, I have the Power BI data sets in my system, so you can also use that. And if you have already created reports or PBIX file available, that can be also accessed from uh, this interface only. Right now. Uh, I was talking about that uh, relationship and uh, how your data will be look like. So for example, we have two tables here. And uh, in this section, you can see here in the left side, this panel, we have three options. So first is to uh, like display this report and second is for the data. So how you want to see your data, how you want to change the data. So I have selected first table, so that is where I'm able to see two columns. And for this one, I have this much of data. So from here, uh, let's say, for example, if some item is incorrect, then you can also update this value from here and you can just apply the changes and correct that errors. As I was mentioning that sometimes uh, you might have an error uh, while uh, uh, pulling out the data. So in that case, you can access and change from here. And I was talking about the relationship, like how you can model the data and normalize uh, when uh, uh, you have more than one table. So we have the option to uh, normalize the data by using this model option. So and then you can just uh, use this uh, uh, interface to 
connect with any uh, any uh, other tables right so it's working more like you can just drag and drop and it will allow you to establish the relationship between more than one tables right so it's one and one one to many relationship so again you have to identify based on your understanding and collecting the requirement or discussing with the business stakeholders like how the information will be associated or all the tables associated with each other and what type of relationship we have to uh, use uh, for this uh, reports right so and if you do not want that uh, association then just select the relationship and click on delete and that will be deleted so from here you can see that uh, we can set up this kind of uh, relationship for uh, all the tables now let's uh, create a simple uh, visualization for this one and we will publish this report to power bi service so i'm just using this this one where i'm just displaying id and uh, title yes yes like this right assume that this is our report and we want that this report can be accessible for all the users external users so till now we don't have that uh, publish option selected for this report so it is not available for external or end users not external but end users to access this report now before that uh, i was explaining that uh, how you can analyze the data right so once you have this uh, data available in any visual just right click on that and you will be able to see this options so from here you can check analyze and uh, find where this distribution is different so it will allow you to like uh, uh, like if something is not correct or not uh, in a proper way then it could give you hint uh, from this uh, pop-up so uh, there is no di significance difference in the distribution so we are good this way you can just check how uh, your data is coming and you are able to analyze that right? and if you want to use this summarize then uh, you can also use this uh, option right see here is a question and answer right? so i'm not going to use that as it is not required for this demo but you can also use whatever the options we have uh, here uh, for this visual visual uh, visual uh, control whatever the control we have used so far so we can use that i'm just deleting this and uh, so okay now i want to like uh, publish or make this report available in my power bi service so how you can connect with your power bi service so for that now so far we are doing everything in our local system this is in power bi desktop now power bi service is another service which is available in your uh, microsoft tenant so let's say for example if you have your microsoft account and your tenant is there then you have to log in so i am logged, already logged in into this site and in the product suits uh, this app launcher you will be able to see one option called power bi so once you click on that you will be able to see this power bi thing i'm just connecting again so clicking on power bi it will load this uh, for you like whosoever is logged in it will greet with you your name and then uh, in the left navigation you can see uh, there are other options available in the left navigation you have this option like create browse data hub metrics apps workspace right so this is useful when you are talking about how to create the apps uh, sorry workspace 
how to use the apps, how to browse already existing files, PBX file and uh, upload it here. So that will be available in Power BI service. So whatever the report we are creating, let's say we have not saved this report as of now. So let's save this first. So I'm just saving this report. And I'm just using this uh, uh, here only. I'm just trying to give it a name for my demo report. One. And you see the extension is PBIX here. So this is the report file and I'm just saving on that. So this report is saved now, right? Now I want to create a specific workspace for this report only. Why we should go with the separate workspace? As I was mention, mentioning that data analyst is responsible to manage this data sets, workspace, reports, and everything, right? When it comes to the uh, sharing with users who should have access, they, at that point, uh, that point of time, you have to think about these options. So it is better to uh, having a good practice, create separate workspaces for separate projects because that project might have n number of reports, right? So it's better to categorize from the beginning. So to create new workspace, uh, I will click on this workspaces option and click on create a workspace. OK, so here you can see I don't have this pro version for the Power BI, so I am not able to create a uh, a workspace for me because I have the limitation of having only one workspace. So I can go with the try version, try free, but I do not want to go as of now. But these are the steps like you can create the workspace from here. And once you are having that workspace created for you, let's assume that we have created a workspace called my workspace, for example. So once you click on that, you will be able to see all the reports, all these reports available for this workspace, my workspace, right, this workspace. So the report which we just created with demo report one, it is still not there in this, uh, uh, this, my, uh, this workspace. So if I search from here, demo report, I will not see anything, right? So what will we do? We'll publish this report in this workspace, my workspace. Workspace name is my workspace. So let's do that. So here in this Power BI desktop, you have an option called publish. So I'm just clicking on publish. And here you will be able to see that available workspaces, right? So I'm just selecting my workspace. And if you have more than workspace, like 10, 15 workspace in your tenant, then you have the capability to search it. So you can search accordingly and select uh, your workspace and click on select button. Now, see publishing the report to Power BI and our report will be there. So yeah, it's done now. So here you can see that message. Open demo report one PBIX in Power BI. So if you want to open that, you can click on here. Otherwise, you can go with this uh, Power BI service in browser and you can see here demo report. Right, it is available for us demo report one demo report one. Now you should have question like we have uploaded one file, but why we are able to see two files here? Right, so whenever we are publishing any report, that report comes with that data set. So this is the data set. You can see this symbol. This symbol is for data set and this is for the report. So each and every report you are publishing from Power BI desktop, it will come with your uh, data set. So data set, why is coming with the data set? Because in Power BI, we are using this fields, whatever the table we have used. So this is coming under that data set. This uh, SPS and Tabad, something like that, whatever the name you are using. So that is coming under that data set. So we have to uh, manage that data set as well. Right? Now, 
I'm just clicking on this demo report one. So it will open that report, the same report which we have in the Power BI desktop. So this is Power BI desktop. Right, this is right side uh, 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 screen is Power BI desktop. And uh, this one, same report. This is in Power BI desktop and this is in Power BI service. Right, this way you can have your report into Power BI services. Now, what other options we can utilize from here? Let's say, for example, uh, I want to like uh, export this report into PDF file, right? So we have an option here, export PDF, PowerPoint, or analyze in Excel. So you can use any option from here. You can use uh, export to PDF or export to PowerPoint. And if you want to download it, just click on file and download this file. This PBIX file will be available for us, uh, for you to use or extend it. And uh, if you want to share this file, as I was mentioning that uh, as a data analyst, you will be responsible to manage these reports, data sets, workspace, and to, to go with your sharing. So click on share. And again, I have the limitation, but you can have that option to share with your organization people. So you will be able to see that option like this. So I'm just sharing something from here. Uh, click on share and you will be able to see like this and you just have to use the username uh, with whom you want to share right so once you are selecting the user and sharing this report that user will be able to access the report directly from that link shared link right that's one thing now uh, let's say for example uh, in this list uh, in this data set, for example, I am adding, I am updating this table. Right? Or, uh, or I'm just updating this list from here. Sorry, not from here. here. And I'm trying to Delete this row. Row number. Or oh, let's do it. Line number seven two. So this way, I'm just trying to update that. I've deleted the column because I just wanted to make sure that data source will be refreshed. So we have two columns now, title and email. And I'm just selecting this. OK, I want to go with these changes. And I'm good. I'm just selecting yes. Close this. This one again. Check this data. Increase this. Because we have deleted that column, so we have to refresh it. So we will not have that ID column for us now. Right here you can see we have email and title only in the left side. We have just transformed data by removing that ID column. Now I have not published this report yet in this uh, Power BI services, so it will not be reflected uh, uh, while uh, I was doing something with that report. So if I click on this report again, I will be able to see the three uh, columns here. 
right? So we have to republish this report again after doing these changes, and this will be replaced by the new one. I'm just saving this file again, and it will ask you to replace because this file is already there. Right? Replace this data set because this data set is already there uh, in the Power BI service. So I'm just clicking on replace and it will replace this new file as well as the data set. It and go to this one and just click on refresh. So it will display with two rows only, two columns like email address and name, the title and name, email address, sorry. Right? Now, what happens if uh, we want that some data is uh, like updating frequently? So I was talking about that uh, uh, auto refresh or scheduling for the ref uh, this refresh. So you have to select your data set, uh, sorry, workspace. And from there, which data set you want to uh, refresh as a on scheduler basis. So for this data set, you can see this icon. This refresh icon, this one. So that is basically used to uh, refresh your data set forcefully. If you click here, it will display or refresh the data set forcefully. But what if you want to uh, uh, have a scheduler, right? So for that, you just click on these three dots and one menu will be open. So from under this menu, you can just click on settings. And under these settings, you have an option called schedule refresh right so uh, i just need to reconnect my sharepoint site for two and organizational i mean just the login authenticating uh, my newly uh, changed password so yeah okay so now we don't have that app or error here so in schedule refresh, uh, you can just. In schedule refresh option, it is turned off now. So if you click on turned on, then you will be able to see this. Uh, uh, this refresh frequency available and you can select time zone and you can add another times. So just click on that off to on. And if you want that daily. Select daily or weekly, we have two options. So most of the time we should go with the daily because the data will be changed very frequently. And from here you can change the time zone like on which time zone you want uh, this scheduler to be running. Right now in a day we have 24 hours. So there is a limit of you can add maximum 48. Uh, uh, this uh, schedule uh, time options. So once you click on add another time. Like it's it can start from one o'clock. Then 130. Here we have only two options, 0 or 30. We don't have any option or custom option like what if I want to run this at 120 a.m. So we don't have that option. So you have to select like this and you can add as many as you want. Right. And once this is done, then you can just uh, click on apply and then this refresh auto refresh schedule will be available for this data set. Demo report one. So that's for the auto reference and uh, I was talking about that security uh, thing. So for this data set again, click on these three dots and click on security. And from here you can just uh, select row level security, right? So uh, mm -hmm. from here you can just use that row level security and uh, yeah, security is no longer working. You will need to recreate RLS. So I have to recreate from the Power BI desktop. But from here, you can also provide that row level security for any data source. So if you go to uh, this report, uh, you also have the share option from here. You can share it from here or else you can just click on these three dots and uh, have different options like settings. So if you want to change this report name, description, Upload it and endorsement like if you want to endorse with uh, uh, someone like distribute the report to your coworkers, then you can just select the promote. Then other options like 
use the modern visual header with updated styling. So these are the options that can be uh, reconsidered for this report from this uh, Power BI services. And if we go to this again, settings, um, yeah. So other options you can see uh, from here, you can also uh, able to see this refresh history. So you can click on that and whenever uh, the scheduler or uh, any uh, refresh thing happened with your data, then it will be available in this list. Right? So you will be able to see if any refresh uh, or scheduled refresh gets failed, then you can uh, get that information from here. Then you have the data source credentials. So in my case, I am using SharePoint as a data source. So it will ask you to edit credentials. If it is unauthenticated or unauthorized, then you, you will get an error. And if you are using another data source, then whatever the data source we have used in this Power BI uh, data modeling or getting the data, all this data source connections uh, credentials will be listed in there. So you have to uh, check all the authentication accordingly. And then uh, uh, list access. Yeah, so if you want that, uh, you want to send something uh, uh, for a request, so user requesting access will get the following instruction. So let's say, for example, someone is asking for uh, access request. So you can just type in the uh, instruction how to get access on this uh, report so you can also like automate this and uh, apply that uh, policy here and then workspace yeah now come to the workspace again so here in workspace you can see uh, content and the uh, data set flows so data set plus data flows where you will be able to see all the data sets so here you can see uh, this type is all data sets. So all the data sets will be available in the data flow. You can just filter it out from all if you are looking out for something uh, for the data sets, right? So you can also use that. And now I was talking about the apps uh, in the uh, beginning of the uh, today's session. So we have the apps like uh, I have used uh, two uh, out of the two apps from the app source. So you can see uh, whatever the apps you have used so far that will be available in your apps area. So apps are collection of dashboard and reports in one easy to find place. So I have used that. I'm just clicking on the uh, hospital emergency response decision support system. So again, it is restricted, but the idea is basic idea is uh, you will be able to uh, get all the apps uh, which is like coming as a uh, basic data structure or the data. So you will be able to see like how it will look like. Let me open one of the report. Uh, this is for. Yeah, let's open this human resource sample. So this is my dashboard. Okay. So the dashboard will look like this, but here I will not be able to see any data set right but if i go to the power bi report and in power bi report we have a section called fields from there we can see what are the data data sets we have used in this report so the dash dashboard will look like this like these are the different components we have used and you can uh, drill down uh, whatever the component you are looking out for so if i go to this page Page. This is for new hire, is a single component. Whereas in dashboard, I was able to see everything. Right in dashboard. And, and this is for the active and separation. We have four components in the dashboard. So I'm just opening that dashboard again. Human resource sample. So here you can see we have four components. One, two. This is first one. This is second, third, and fourth. 
and these are the tiles. So tiles is a kind of just displaying the major number, nothing else. So if I want to drill down this specific to this component only, right? Then I can just click on that and it will open with all the details like and here I can see the filters. But because this is the data set, we are dealing with this data set. On dashboard, we will not be able to see this filter option. But if we go to the specific component, then we will be able to see that. Now from here, you can change the filters. Like if I want to change or uh, type something like, uh, yeah, that we have to provide here. So for example, employee type is full time, right? So it will change the data accordingly. Right? So from here, you can also identify like how my search will work, how my search for uh, criteria will work when it goes to the end user. Like end user should also have this capability to ex explore more or drill down the data, right? So here you can also uh, identify the filter uh, filters so like from here. If I go to the dashboard again, in the dashboard I have the capability to explore more. Click here. And then we can use this filter. Filter. filter based on we don't have anything as a month filter size are affecting the visuals from here we can also analyze the data if there is a difference so as table so all the options you can figure out from here as well once it comes as a separate components right so uh, this is how this uh, uh, dashboard will look like and if I go to the sales and marketing sample, so this is again uh, another uh, uh, layout to be displayed for uh, sales and marketing uh, as a dashboard. So here you can see we have used these styles, but if I open that, you will be able to see only that option for that tile only. So here you can see visualizations, we have used tiles instead of using any visual controls. And if I go back, if I click here like this. So we have the filter option available here. And we have used this cluster bar chart for this visualization. And we have this total units as a X axis. And we are just pulling product information from another table which is segment, right? Here you can see in a y-axis segment. So it's a combination of two tables to display the data in a single report. But before that, we have to be more precise while you are uh, uh, establishing the relationship between two tables and uh, try to render the data in a way where you can address something to the end user that they can understand the the result of the data and based on that they can take an action right so uh, this is how it works and then uh, let me go to that data set once again uh, just check quickly modeling Yeah, see from here on this uh, uh, ribbon, you can also use some kind of uh, more visuals options. Uh, we have that option called apps or from my files, or you can also click on new visual and that new visual will be, uh, this window will be added to select visuals for you. And select, you can drag and drop from visual screen, like from here, you can just drag and drop to this screen. 
like this. So we have options uh, not really not limited to getting the visuals from here, but mm -hmm. you can also use this Mesa as well. And uh, just checking that data set. Yeah, and I was talking about that columns. So let's say, for example, I want to add the custom column for this uh, table. So we have option called new column. So I'm just adding that column here, right? And just giving the name. New column. And give it a name from here. You can change the name. And where you want to display data, right? If I want to display data like concatenation of title and email address, I just have to use the function concat. So this is a kind of DEX I was talking about. You can use uh, a function of then you can just use the column name title. So you have this called title. And just add with uh, dash. And use another column called email address. Right and just as is and enter. So it will have this data. Too many arguments, uh, so we have to correct. OK, so we do not have to use this. We have to use this. Okay. Right like this. So it will display the name first and then it will append or we can use uh, a separator. Uh, comma like this. We have to use that condition for uh, getting that one. So the idea is it is not limited that if you have uh, five or six column and uh, you want to uh, have something calculated or use this uh, DAX function or other functions available or any uh, expression you want to use and make a custom column that will be available in your data set. And this column can be used in your report. That is also possible, right? So this is the one way that you can add custom column and uh, uh, you can change that uh, data type as well from here. You can change the name from here. Like for example, combination. And so it will be changed like that. And you can also change the format if any. So these are the options available for uh, using this uh, simple function and uh, uh, create your custom column. Right? So, and again, after doing all the changes, you have to republish your report. So that will be available for end user with uh, latest data. Right. So, yeah, I think that's all from my end for uh, this uh, basic introduction for PL300 and how you can connect with your Power BI desktop, how to use it, and what are the capabilities we have for uh, uh, publishing the report and uh, uh, available, make it available for uh, all end users so they can access the real time data. Uh, either we could access, uh, apply this uh, schedule refresh or not, or incremental refresh. That's all depend on all requirements, like how frequently you want to update the data. Yeah. Yeah, Chaitali, uh, I think uh, I'm done with what, what needs to be covered for this session. And uh, let me know if we have any questions or anyone have any questions, then we have like uh, 10, 15 minutes to address those questions. Yeah. OK, so those who have any questions, they can drop their questions in the chat box so sir can take. Anyone any questions, please drop it in the chat box. Or else we can wind up the session. Also, I am sharing the feedback form which you have to fill. And share the feedback on the session. Yeah, Just and now this I is... have dropped the yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, exactly. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll update okay. later on. I have just now dropped the feedback form in the chat box, so do fill out the feedback.
Yes, sir. There are two questions from Devjani and Nikhil. I guess yeah. Yeah, that's already figured out when I was explaining that uh, table thing. Maybe the merge table. Uh, new questions uh, are there again uh, in the chat box. Okay, can we set up direct query from DB without a need to refresh? Yes, we can do that, but eventually it will try to hit your data source directly. So it all depends on uh, the policy your organization is having and the data you are trying to pull out. So it's better to normalize all the queries, but yeah, that's possible. And measure and new column. OK, so measure is basically as I mentioned that it is a kind of. Uh, uh, summarization of any column, right? Measure is also a kind of column, but. Let's say if I'm just giving you an example. Uh, let's assume that scenario. I have a column called. Uh, uh, start date, for example, which is having. Date and timestamp. And some of the values will have some text information or null value in that column. Now, I would, how is it possible for me to sorting that in ascending or descending order? Because I have also some records with the blank value, so it will not allow me to sorting out of the box, right? So what I will do, I will create one matrix on that column, start date column, where I will apply kind of uh, uh, logic where if I found some rows as a blank value, I will exclude those rows or I can bypass a kind of uh, dummy date in that column. So I will be able to get my sorting result. So that case uh, we can use measure. Otherwise custom column is also available, but all depends on your requirement, like how you want to deal with specific scenario. You have to understand the business scenario how you want to uh, like uh, have the data uh, available for end users and is it suffice your requirement either using my, uh, the measure or custom column so that's the logic uh, you have to use that i think we cannot embed javascript as of now in power bi report i have not come across with that experience so far but uh, we can embed uh, images. I'm not sure we don't have any interface to uh, have this JavaScript embedded as of now because it, see what happens. We have to use the visuals. Everything will be available for in the control. So to render that JavaScript or any HTML, we have to use any visuals. So under that visual, if it is supporting, then we will be able to see that. Otherwise, uh, we have to go with the third party component from the app source. Yeah, and uh, I was telling that uh, uh, this is a kind of introductory session as as uh, it's a huge one PL 300 like uh, there are a lot of components that can be addressed in a in a in a depth depth way. Uh, but uh, as Shaitali mentioned that you can also leverage that uh, a discount offer and some uh, hands on material will be available if you appear for that. So in that you will be able to spend more time uh, like uh, three days or four days uh, session and then you will be having more information on all the practical aspects and business scenarios. But this is just to update you that OK, these are the possibilities as a data analyst you have to uh, address and you have these capabilities while creating the reports, publishing the reports and managing those reports as well as the data sets. Mm, no, that's not correct. Yeah, correct uh, like any type. But again, yes, I was mentioning that it all depends on how you want to represent the data and the best suitable visual, right? As I was explaining that email address, so for email address, it is not a good idea to use the chart control. So it's better to use the table only. But if you have some kind of sales and product information, then you can go with the bar chart or the stack chart or where you want to uh, display a component with slice with the percentage, then you can go with the bar chart. Uh, sorry, pie chart. So it it all depends on requirement, like how you want to display the data. Or what type of data you want to display. 
like sometimes what happens like you just need to uh, display the data like uh, uh, what is the revenue for this month sales revenue right for this month current month so in that case we do not have to go with the, any chart control we just use the tiles and under that tiles we can pull out these sales for the current month so based on the the, the data and the the rendering of the data how you want to visualize uh, that as a for for end user that all depends on uh, uh, that requirement but it is not restricted oh, to sure. use or, sure. uh, or or find any any uh, specific criteria to use any chat so for job opportunities uh, there are a lot of opportunities as of now because uh, we have that uh, power platform is a kind of uh, uh, good exposure as of now and uh, there are a lot of opportunities for the people who have the certification uh, in any area of the power platform and if you are more interested with the data analyst then this would be a kind of uh, good uh, step to go ahead Okay, so I think no more questions from the participants. So we can wind up the session. Also, the PPT which Kirti sir has uh, just created for your reference purpose in this training, we can't share it. But uh, the MOC which has been provided to you has uh, all of it, so you can refer to that. Also, this the recording which we, of the session which will be provided to you on the YouTube channel link. So do subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get access to this recording. OK, so thank you so much, Kirti sir, for this session and thanks to all for participating. We are about to wind up. All the details for the discounts and offerings has been mentioned in the chat box. You can go through that. Once again, thanks to all. Have a happy weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Sekali, and uh, thanks everyone for having me. Thank you. Thank you.